Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this special edition of Lou Dobbs Tonight. We're moments away from President Trump, who tonight will swear in Justice Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. We'll bring you the entire ceremony as you look uh, there at all of those assembled in the East Room of the White House. All of this live as it happens, and it's an event, 91 long days in the making. Tonight, it is my honor and privilege to announce that I will nominate Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. The radical Dems immediately attacked the president's nominee with the most heinous charges, the most scurrilous, fraudulent charges by even the standards of the radical left and their search and destroy politics of personal destruction. Their leader, crying Chuck Schumer, vowed to stop Kavanaugh no matter what. Well, I will oppose him with everything I've got. And he did. But the radical Dems weren't satisfied to simply oppose Kavanaugh. Instead, they, along with their allies and the left-wing national media, engaged in a smear campaign the likes of which the nation has never before seen. Kavanaugh, the highly qualified jurist, husband, father of two daughters, accused of sexual misconduct in high school. And the radical Dems didn't bother to corroborate a single charge before they attacked Judge Kavanaugh and his family. In a public testimony before Congress, Kavanaugh defended his name against the baseless attacks, vowed he would not be intimidated. Through all of the smears from the radical left, President Trump stood strongly by Kavanaugh. And Saturday, Kavanaugh was finally confirmed by the Senate, a vote 50 to 48, the closest ever. And following that vote, Kavanaugh sworn in in two ceremonies by both Chief Justice John Roberts and retired Justice Anthony Kennedy, Kavanaugh's mentor and the man who he replaces on the court. The President of the United States is now walking out in the East Room to again swear in the 114th Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. It is quite a night for the President, for the Kavanaugh family, uh, and for this extraordinary man who will be sitting on the court from here on. The President of the United States, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Members of Congress, members of the Cabinet, honored guests, and fellow Americans, it is my privilege to address you tonight from the East Room of the White House. We are gathered together this evening for a truly momentous occasion. I have long been told that the most important decision a President can make is the appointment of a Supreme Court justice. Well, in just a few moments, we will proudly swear in the newest member of the United States Supreme Court, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Joining us for tonight's ceremony is every sitting Supreme Court Justice, Chief Justice Roberts, thank you, Justice Thomas, thank you, 
Justice Ginsburg. Thank you. Justice Breyer. Thank you, Justice. Justice Alito. Justice Sotomayor. Thank you. Justice Kagan. Thank you. And Justice Gorsuch. I would also like to send our deep appreciation to Maureen Scalia, the wife of the late, great Antonin Scalia, and also to our White House counsel, Don McGahn. Thank you, Don. Thank you. We are thrilled to be joined this evening by Justice Anthony Kennedy. Justice Kennedy, America owes you a profound debt of gratitude for a lifetime of noble service to our nation, and I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Very special and treasured guests tonight are Justice Kavanaugh's amazing wife, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. And their two beautiful daughters, Margaret and Liza. And we are also joined by Justice Kavanaugh's mom and dad, Martha and Ed. Thank you. I would like to begin tonight's proceeding differently than perhaps any other event of such magnitude. On behalf of our nation, I want to apologize to Brett and the entire Kavanaugh family for the terrible pain and suffering you have been forced to endure. Those who step forward to serve our country deserve a fair and dignified evaluation, not a campaign of political and personal destruction based on lies and deception. What happened to the Kavanaugh family violates every notion of fairness, decency, and due process. Our country, a man or a woman, must always be presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty. And with that, I must state that you, sir, under historic scrutiny, were proven innocent. Thank you. <laughs> Margaret and Eliza, your father is a great man. He is a man of decency, character, kindness, and courage, who has devoted his life to serving his fellow citizens. And now, from the bench of our nation's highest court, your father will defend the eternal rights and freedoms of all Americans. You know that. <laughs> we are joined tonight by a leader who has never wavered in his support and devotion to the rule of law, and to Brett Kavanaugh's elevation. He's worked very, very hard, and he truly has done just an incredible and wonderful job for the American people. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Thank you, Mitch. Please, stand up.
think that's the biggest hand he's ever received. They just don't. <laughs> they don't get it, Mitch. You're great. Thank you. Very much appreciated. I'd like to thank another man whose principled leadership has earned widespread admiration, Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Senator Chuck Grassley. Thank you, Chuck. We are grateful to all of the senators on the Judiciary Committee who fought so hard for this confirmation. Senators Lindsey Graham, John Cornyn, Orrin Hatch, Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, Ben Sass, Jeff Flake, Mike Crapo, Tom Tillis, and John Kennedy. And thank you also to Rob Portman, sitting right here. Thank you, Rob Portman. And finally, we are indebted to Senator Susan Collins for her brave and eloquent speech and her declaration that when passions are most inflamed, fairness is most in jeopardy. How true, how true. Brett Kavanaugh is a man of outstanding intellect, a brilliant scholar, and his credentials are unsurpassed. A graduate of both Yale College and Yale Law School, he has taught at Harvard, Yale, and Georgetown. When he's not working or with his family, he's giving back to his community. He spent 26 years in public service, and just like Justice Gorsuch, he clerked for Justice Kennedy. For the last 12 years, Brett was a judge on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, widely regarded as our nation's second highest court. During his tenure, he authored over 300 opinions distinguished by their masterful and impartial reasoning. Known as a judge's judge, he is a fair-minded, unbiased, and even-handed person. He understands that justice must be divorced from the passions of the day, tethered instead to the enduring foundation of our republic, the Constitution. Justice Kavanaugh fills the place left by Anthony Kennedy. Soon, Justice Kennedy will administer the judicial oath to Brett Kavanaugh, just as he did last year for Justice Gorsuch. This will be the first time a Supreme Court justice has ever sworn in a former clerk to take his seat. A beautiful moment which reminds us that freedom is a tradition passed down from generation to generation. And that's a big statement, and I want to thank you for that so much. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. Margaret and Eliza's presence tonight reminds us what his historic event, All About Your Father, is all about. It's about what kind of a nation we're going to be and what kind of a country our children will inherit. It is up to each of us and to all Americans watching tonight to answer that question. It is up to us to reclaim our heritage of equal and impartial justice. It is up to us to rededicate ourselves to the traditions and wisdom of our founders. And it is up to us to renew the bonds of love, loyalty, and affection that link us all together as one great American family. Let us pray we are successful in this task, and let us pray that all of America's children will grow up in a country that is fair and just and safe and strong and free. And let us ask God to bless Justice Kavanaugh and his family as they embark 
on this incredible journey together. I now invite Justice Brett Kavanaugh to come forward and to take the judicial oath. Thank you very much. Please repeat after me. I, Brett M. Kavanaugh, do solemnly swear. I, Brett M. Kavanaugh, do solemnly swear. That I will administer justice without respect to persons. That I will administer justice without respect to persons. And do equal right to the poor and to the rich. And do equal right to the poor and to the rich. And that I will faithfully and impartially and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me, all the duties incumbent upon me as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, under the Constitution and laws of the United States, under the Constitution and laws of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Mr. President, thank you for the great honor of appointing me to serve as a Justice of the Supreme Court. I've seen firsthand your deep appreciation for the vital role of the American judiciary. I am grateful for your steadfast, unwavering support throughout this process. And I'm grateful to you and Mrs. Trump for the exceptional, overwhelming courtesy you have extended to my family and me. Mr. President, thank you for everything. I am honored to serve on a Supreme Court headed by Chief Justice John Roberts. Chief Justice Roberts is a principled, independent, and inspiring leader for the American judiciary. As a country, we are fortunate to have John Roberts as Chief Justice of the United States. I'm honored to serve alongside all of my new colleagues, each of whom I know, and each of whom I greatly admire and deeply respect. All nine of us revere the Constitution. Article 3 of the Constitution provides that the judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is an institution of law. It is not a partisan or political institution. The justices do not sit on opposite sides of an aisle. We do not caucus in separate rooms. The Supreme Court is a team of nine and I will always be a team player on the team of nine. As a new justice on the Supreme Court, I understand the responsibility that I bear. Some 30 years ago, standing here in the East Room with President Reagan, Anthony Kennedy took the oath to be a new justice of the Supreme Court. Justice Kennedy became one of the most consequential justices in American history. I served as Justice Kennedy's law clerk in 1993. To me, Justice Kennedy is a mentor, 
a friend, and a hero. On the Supreme Court, he was a model of civility and collegiality. He fiercely defended the independence of the judiciary and zealously guarded the individual liberties secured by the Constitution. Justice Kennedy established a legacy of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. I will always be humbled and proud to sit in Justice Kennedy's seat on the Supreme Court. Thank you. I thank the members of the United States Senate, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, for his leadership and steady resolve. I thank Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley for his wisdom and fairness. And I give special gratitude to Senators Rob Portman, Susan Collins, Joe Manchin, John Kyle, and Lindsey Graham. They are credit to the country and the Senate. I'll be forever grateful to each of them and to all the Senators who carefully considered my nomination. Presiding over the final vote in the Senate on Saturday was Vice President Pence. I'm grateful to the Vice President for his sound advice and faithful support. I thank counsel to the President Don McGahn, who was a warrior for fairness and performed his critical duties in the finest traditions of our Constitution. Thank you. I thank all the outstanding people in the White House, the Department of Justice, and the Senate who worked day and night on this nomination. One of a federal judge's most important responsibilities is to hire four new law clerks each year. The law clerks are recent law school graduates, and they work in the judges' chambers for one year. They're among the best and brightest young lawyers in America, and they become the future leaders of the legal profession. I thank my former law clerks who devoted so much time and energy to support me during the confirmation process. <laughs> Inspired by my mom, who was a trailblazer for women in the law, I've worked hard throughout my career to promote the advancement of women. Women still face many barriers in the American workplace. And all of us have a responsibility to address that problem. During my 12 years on the D.C. Circuit, a majority of my law clerks were women. And almost all of them went on to clerk at the Supreme Court. A clerkship on the Supreme Court is one of the most coveted achievements and credentials in American law. I'm proud that all four of my newly hired law clerks at the Supreme Court are women a first in the history of the Supreme Court. Tonight, I thank all my friends, so many amazing and fearless friends uh, from my high school days, college, law school, clerking, the Bush White House, including President George W. Bush, From the judiciary, teaching, coaching, playing sports, the vibrant, loyal, and tight-knit Catholic community here in the D.C. area, and so many others. Ashley and I are grateful for their prayers and for the prayers from the thousands and thousands of people we have heard from throughout America. When I give advice to young people or speak to students, I tell them, cherish your friends, look out for your friends, lift up your friends. Love your friends. I love all my friends. I thank my family. My mom, Martha, and my dad, Ed, are here. I'm their only child. My mom was one of Maryland's earliest women prosecutors and trial judges. 
My dad taught me his work ethic and love of sports. They've given me a lifetime of love, and I'm forever grateful to them. <laughs> My daughters, Margaret and Liza, are smart, strong, awesome girls. They're in the middle of fall lacrosse, looking forward to the upcoming basketball season. <laughs> I thank their teachers for giving them the day off tomorrow so that they can come watch two cases being argued at the Supreme Court. <laughs> My wife, Ashley, is a proud West Texan from Abilene, Texas, graduate of Abilene Cooper Public High School, University of Texas at Austin. She's the dedicated town manager of our local community. She's got a deep faith. She's an awesome mom, a great wife. She is a rock. I thank God every day for Ashley and my family. The Senate confirmation process was contentious and emotional. That process is over. My focus now is to be the best justice I can be. I take this office with gratitude and no bitterness. On the Supreme Court, I will seek to be a force for stability and unity. My goal is to be a great justice for all Americans and for all of America. I will work very hard to achieve that goal. I was not appointed to serve one party or one interest, but to serve one nation. America's constitution and laws protect every person of every belief and every background. Every litigant in the Supreme Court can be assured that I will listen to their arguments belief and every background. Every litigant in the Supreme Court can be assured that I will listen to their arguments with respect and an open mind. Every American can be assured that I will be an independent and impartial justice devoted to equal justice under law. Although the Supre Senate confirmation process tested me as it has tested others, it did not change me. My approach to judging remains the same. A good judge must be an umpire, a neutral and impartial decider who favors no litigant or policy. A judge must be independent and must interpret the law, not make the law. A judge must interpret statutes as written, and a judge must interpret the Constitution as written, informed by history and tradition and precedent. In the wake of the Senate confirmation process, my approach to life also remains the same. I will continue to heed the message of Matthew 25. I will continue to volunteer to serve the least fortunate among us. I will continue to coach, teach, and tutor. I will continue to strive to be a good friend, colleague, husband, and dad. As in the past, our nation today faces challenges and divisions. But I am an optimist. I live on the sunrise side of the mountain. I see the day that is coming, not the day that is gone. I am optimistic about the future of America and the future of our independent judiciary, the crown jewel of our constitutional republic. As a justice on the Supreme Court, I will always strive to preserve the Constitution of the United States and the American rule of law. Thank you all. Associate Justice, 
Brett M. Kavanaugh, 114th Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. He referred to the process that he and his family, the nation, just went through as being at an end and uh, expressed great optimism about the country. And it was nice to hear this justice thank all of his friends whom he loves, uh, acknowledge a president who stood with him throughout, unwaveringly, he pointed out. Uh, it, is, uh, it has been a, just a marvelous, marvelous ceremony. And the president uh, acknowledging all of the guests. Those guests include Anthony Kennedy, the former justice, whose seat, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, uh, is now uh, to sit in. Uh, for the first time, uh, a clerk of, uh, uh, of a Supreme Court justice taking Ladies the very gentlemen. seat yes, of that uh, jurist, uh, a, a wonderful moment. Uh, in fact, consecutively, two years in a row, uh, one of uh, Justice uh, Kennedy's uh, clerks assuming the, uh, the uh, justiceship of the uh, Supreme Court. Joining uh, me tonight here with me is uh, my good friend Ed Rollins, uh, the chairman of the Great America PAC, former Reagan White House political director, Fox News political analyst, and much, much more. Well, uh, Ed, good to have you here and to, to watch this uh, remarkable ceremony, a touching moment, uh, a serious uh, and profound moment, uh, and, a, and a, a, an incredible victory for the Republican Party and this president. And this country. This is a superb young man who will basically be in this court for a long period of time. He has very unique credentials, uh, obviously as great a credentials as anybody that's ever served in that court. And over time, uh, people will look at his writings, uh, his decisions, and, uh, and uh, not pay a bit of attention to all the stuff that's gone on the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a wish too far. I, I think the Republican Party, in fact, I'll go beyond that. I hope the Republican Party never forgets those weeks. Uh, and the, uh, the debasing of the process of confirming a justice uh, to the Supreme Court. Uh, it has been an, an extraordinary chapter in our history and one that should never have taken place. But the politics of personal destruction uh, make it un, uh, unforgettable, uh, if not indeed well, they, for some, unforgivable. They could not touch his credentials because he's had superb credentials, both mm -hmm. as a White House uh, important player and, tw and 12 years on the court. Uh, at the end of the day here, they, they, they made false charges against him, uh, uh, couldn't prove any of them. And I think at the end of the day, he will basically join a very strong court, a very bright court, right. uh, and, and, and uh, basically be there for a long period of time and do good stuff. I, I, I find it uh, interesting that the president immediately apologized to, uh, as we're watching uh, the president uh, th this evening, uh, as he introduced uh, uh, Justice Kavanaugh now uh, and his family. Uh, this is the ceremony that uh, lasted just under a, a half hour. Uh, remarkable, remarkable first in that the president of the United States apologized to Justice Kavanaugh and his family uh, for, for what the radical Dems of this country put him through. Uh, those, uh, uh, Justice uh, Kavanaugh, uh, I, I thought was uh, brilliant throughout in his remarks. Well, he was brilliant through his remarks and he was brilliant through his career. The, the, key, the key thing here is the, the, the lack of civility that the Democrats expressed towards this court and towards this man uh, was unheard of in my, and I've, ne I've never seen it before, but I always saw them jump all over Judge Bork uh, and eliminate him, which is terrible, and did the same, try to do the same thing to, to Judge Thomas. But this was even more vicious. They could not touch his credentials. And so they had these falsehoods, and I don't, I don't uh, yeah, cast his versions. In no way does that mean that as a rationalization no, for not, what no. was the viciousness uh, and the scurrilous attacks uh, taken against uh, just, uh, just now Justice Kavanaugh and his family. Uh, this is the low of the low. And I, I'm I, I'm and I, I, I personally can find no way in the world in which anyone who values the values and the traditions and basic decency and honesty could ever forget what the left, the radical left... Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we can. I think the key thing here, though, for him and for the country, we need to move forward. And, uh, oh, we're and, going and, to move and, forward. And, 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 this, the, guy, the guy you're looking at right there on camera is making sure this country moves forward. Uh, this is a remarkable leader. 
uh, in his choice of these two justices, in his ability to, to galvanize the nation with confidence and to be to, to thrill to the idea of the nation's future. Uh, he has had the most remarkable record of any president uh, since Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the course of his first, uh, uh, what is it, 21 months in office. There'll be many legacies, but the court will be, his, I think, one of the greatest legacies, both the people he's put on and will put on, and obviously the federal judges across the country that he's done, in addition to everything else. Zed and I have been talking about that apology that uh, President Trump uh, extended to the Kavanaugh family. Uh, here is the president uh, uh, this evening doing just that. On behalf of our nation, I want to apologize to Brett and the entire Kavanaugh family for the terrible pain and suffering you have been forced to endure. Those who step forward to serve our country deserve a fair and dignified evaluation not a campaign of political and personal destruction based on lies and deception. What happened to the Kavanaugh family violates every notion of fairness, decency, and due process. Our country, a man or a woman, must always be presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty. And with that, I must state that you, sir, under historic scrutiny, were proven innocent. Thank you. The president offering no, uh, no suggestion of uh, bitterness on his part uh, toward the, the radicals of the Democratic Party who sit on the Judiciary Committee and who lead the Democratic uh, Party. Uh, it was a night of uh, graciousness and magnanimity uh, that uh, that this president extended to all. Uh, it is uh, it is it seems to me a, a moment in which uh, I think people should acknowledge an inflection point has been actually passed by this president. Uh, you don't hear anyone asking this president to be presidential. You don't ask anyone asking this president to do what he promised because he's doing more than he promised. You don't hear anyone uh, in any way uh, suggesting that he has been playing too much golf, not attending to business, not working harder than everyone else in the city of Washington, because he does work harder than anyone in the city of Washington, and he is creating concrete, specific, extraordinary, broad, deep, profound results on behalf of the American people. Well, what he said in those two paragraphs, that just there at the end there, about qualifications and the right for people to you know, have fair hearings and, and you're innocent until proven guilty, uh, is probably as meaningful as anything ever been said by any president. The reality here is this president, uh, every single day, uh, uh, moves the ball forward, makes the promises he's, he's made, keep, he keeps them. And I think the key thing is he never once wavered uh, in, this, in this battle. There are a lot of keys in what you said, and I have to tell you what, it's remarkable that we have a president who has so many key characteristics Absolutely. in his nature uh, and so much uh, that he uh, uh, seems to delight, revel uh, in doing uh, and creating. That must have something to do with being a builder as opposed to, no, I won't say it about you didn't <laughs> build that. I'll wait until right after this quick break. Stay with us. Up next, the Radical Dems. Yes, they're the Radical Dems. It's getting so maybe we shouldn't call them Radical Dems because radical seems to be uh, a, a relevant descriptor of the entire party. We'll take that up. We'll take up the new Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh and what we can expect. Stay with us. We're coming right back.